I have my slab of clay rolled out here and I can see I have a wrinkle in the fabric. There we go, underneath. And I have my two patterns laid out here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. Uh, I should have cut off this tape. I don't want that there. So remember when you wrap this around, you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit of clay overlap. So on each piece, so when I cut this one out, I have it pretty close to the end here. So I'm gonna cut along there and, and make this just a nice continuous, despite sort of the angles of the paper. And so when I get to this other end, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra clay here so that when I wrap it around, I have a little bit of extra clay to work with and to overlap or to cut a beveled edge. Otherwise, I'm trying to connect two blunt edges. So there's one. And so I don't forget I'll go ahead and do this at this end first. And the darts that we cut, you can cut those a little bit if you want, or you can just cut them out when you're wrapping the clay. And not trying to make this, you know, too exact a science. It's clay, it's malleable, it's flexible. You can kind of change things up later. Okay, so there's my two pieces of clay. Now I'm gonna need some base pieces. I'm not sure any of these are big enough. That center piece probably is. But before I squish it all together, I will. Hold on to some of these bigger pieces that I may be able to use later. Right. Okay, move my patterns out of the way. I think I'll start with the easier one, which was the uh, square box. So if I lay my pattern down there, I can give it a quick, quick measure, see how it lines up. Wrap it around. Ooh, I should have given myself a little bit of extra length to overlap. Keep that in mind when you're doing yours. I, I didn't quite cut. I would have liked a little bit of extra clay here. However, if that's the case and you find yourself a little short, what I can do is just kind of thin this edge a little bit making it a little thinner. I'll do the same on this edge. That's gonna give me a little bit more length and it will make those edges a little bit um, thinner to overlap so that I won't run into a really thick edge. So now when I put this back on, wrap it around usually want my seam to be at a center. Avoid putting your seam on the corner because that's already a, a stress point. Wrap this around. I should have make it a little shorter maybe. Okay, so now I have plenty of overlap and I can go ahead and score these edges. And this edge, my water's way over there. Paint on a little water or slip if you've made it. And bring that around. So taking the time to do that pattern really frees up my time now getting a nice fit around my box. Don't spend 
a huge amount of time trying to make the pattern exact. It's clay, like I said, it will, you can, uh, as long as you get close. And I'm gonna make this seam, just totally smooth it out, make it disappear. Notice I'm moving the clay across the seam this way, not just smoothing it up and down this way. I wanna move some of that clay so that this clay becomes part of this wall. And then it forgets that there was ever a seam there at all. Okay, so that one was the easier one. Let's see how this other one fits that was a little more complicated. I should probably do it this way. So if I'm gonna wrap it around and Again, it's a little short. I'm going to smooth this edge out a bit. Stretch it a little. I guess I didn't account for the thickness of the clay being thicker than the paper. I think I would remember that by now. Okay. And I want it to get right down this uh, form has a, a bit of a lip there that I can use to support the clay at the bottom, which is the rim. So let me get that lined up. This is quite soft clay. I'm using the Alpine weight that nobody at the Art Center likes. So this is gonna need a little bit of time to set up. So now I have loads of overlap, a little too much. And again, this seam part here, you can make that part of the decoration. I will show you, let me grab it out of the kiln project last week. So you can see where the clay overlapped here. I made that just part of the decorative front of the box where the clay overlaps. I'll send you guys that video as well for you guys who are newer and haven't done a lot of this. It may have a few interesting bits in it. Okay, and now scoring the two parts, adding some water or slip, and sealing it up. And I can work on that extra part later. So this part here, I didn't really need to do the darts there's not that much of an angle change. I can just kind of smush the clay and rework it into that shape. Whereas up here, there was such a, an angle change from here to here that if I just wrapped the clay, it would have been way more difficult to get it to take on this form. So we'll set that aside. And then of course the bottoms, Are going to be attached cut out I like to cut let me put this on if you work on top of a uh, piece of paper or a paper towel it makes it a little easier to turn your project around so what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra clay to work with here. I don't know if you can see that. And damaging. That little bit of extra clay, 
I like to have to work it across the seam. What you want to really be careful of is that you don't undercut this angle here because if I undercut it, I'm taking away the clay that needs to attach to the bottom of the wall. So you want to hold your tool fairly vertical and give yourself just a little bit of clay. You don't want a whole lot of extra clay there or you'll be smoothing, smoothing, smoothing for a long time. And then take that off. I'm gonna rough up the bottom here, the bottom of the wall. And just around the outside edge here, where the wall is going to sit. Get my water closer here. Now that I'm done rolling. So wrap that around. And press it down a little bit. So you guys see that extra little bit of clay here. And then I'm going to take that and just bring it up across the seam. You can do it a little quick at first, really just get it sealed. And then I can go back and make it disappear if I want. You can also create that as part of a decorative element, just like on the seam, if you would like. And this is very, very soft. So I'm actually going to let that sit for a little while and come back and finish that once it's a little bit stiffer and smooth that out. And then later I can deal with the rim as well. I'll put the base on this one as well and come back and show you that once I've had a little bit of time to clean it up. All right, we'll see you soon.